I'm here to build you my computer. I am going to show you how I built this new computer that I built while I was in the military, rather than the uh, little one that I had uh, back before I joined. So without further ado, let's get into it. Well, here it is. Everything is laid out. I left the CPU on the motherboard because of the uh, because I don't have any thermal compounds, so I couldn't. Um, so I didn't want to take it off and have a chance to ruin the thermal compound that's already up in there because we are we only have or we have a lot of dust in Hawaii. So, but underneath is a 5820K. Uh, it's an unlocked processor, so I can overclock it. I managed to get from 4. Point, I mean 3.4 to 4.6 gigahertz. So that was a plus side, and it's just a the CPU cooler is just a basic dual uh, radiator cooler, and I have some two extra LED fans that I bought. So because um, it was came with it was only 120 millimeter, I need 140 millimeter fans, and I went with. Uh, Eight sticks of four gigabytes of DDR4 20, uh, 2666 since I'm not working for a higher speed because I like the latency. And we got a 12 or a thousand watt power supply because I don't, I won't be needing any more even if I put a second 1070 uh, in it, which gets into the graphics card. I got a reference 1070 graphics card. It's a basic card, I don't play that high end of games, so maxing out the settings wouldn't help me too much. So it has eight gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, and it turbos up to 1960 uh, gigahertz. 1960 megahertz, my bad. And, uh, we have a sound card. I'm not really fancy about sound cards, but this had great ratings, so I chose this one. It's just a sound blaster. I don't remember what series it was. And I have an X, the chipset for our motherboard is X99. And for the DDR4, I only, I went with four gigabytes to equal um, four by eight. So I would only have 32 gigs RAM. I don't go over like 12 gigabytes anyway, so it doesn't, so I didn't really need the eight gigabyte six. Um, for storage, I got a 240 gig SSD, a uh, SANS disk, for just from basic most used programs and my operating system. And I got a one terabyte Seagate hard drive, 70 uh, 200 RPM. I didn't need anything wicked fast, like a 10,000 RPM, because that's just extra money and I only store games on it and video files, so nah, I don't need it that fast. And plus, um, terabyte, pretty good for me. I don't play a lot of different games. But for my video editing, I have external two terabyte hard drive. At the time, I didn't have access to get um, standard hard drives. And plus, I had this for my laptop before I got this computer, so. I switched it over. And the case, it's pretty basic. It has a window on the side, big enough to fit everything. It has a very good cable management. And the motherboard comes with a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So get into it. The motherboard has about eight 3 point US or 3.0 USB and two 2.0 USB with two USB 3.0 on the case. Without further ado, let's get into building. First things first, RAM on the outside of the motor, or while it's outside of the case, makes it nice and easy because when we put the case together, it's going to be standing upright. And we're putting it in quad channels, so we'll start with the gray and move on to the black. It's very simple, just match up the line in the memory to the uh, line in the CPU slot. I mean in the uh, RAM slot. Since only one side on this motherboard opens up, you put in the stationary RAM side first. You push that in. Come on, go in there. Can you open? Okay, just make sure. 
And should uh, you should hear him talk like. Motherboard uh, installation, you always put the IO shield in, put the icons going out, like the colored icons for the USB 3.0, the, the internet, and the audio jacks. Snap in one corner at a time. The motherboard's heavy with all these rams sticks on it. The IO shield's in backwards. That kind of sucks. I made sure that was in right. So I, it was upside down, so well. Now you don't need to wrench down the motherboard screws, just put them in hand tight. And a little magnet on the screwdrivers won't actually affect your motherboard or your hard drives because it's not strong enough. On this motherboard there is a total of 9 screws. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, oh, 8. Because the middle one is uh, used by a placeholder for the motherboard from the case. And now the motherboard is secured in place. Next, we'll get down to the radiator, and that takes the two 140 millimeter fans that I just pulled back here. Uh, first off, we got to take off the front panel.
Next, we take the two 140 millimeter fans and we want the exhaust going inwards, pulling the air from the front of the case. And we need to make sure our fans are also uh, optimized for cable management. So in this case, the fans will be like on this so we can wrap the cables down through the side where the uh, reroute on the case. I'll be using a drill for this part mainly because uh, it's a lot easier and you don't have to struggle with one hand. I've also used drills a lot so I'm not worried about tightening it too much or, or stripping the screws. Oh, I just put some of this back in. It has those little things on the back. Where is it? Right here? It just slides right on, on it. And then the thumb up screw goes right on the top. It's very stiff, it doesn't look very well made, and it just gets in the way of full shit ton. But these white ones are modular that I bought off of Amazon, so they look very nice in the case. This is the this cord is going to be for the the GPU power, so I'm just going to go ahead and feed that through, so it's basically already put into place. So I'll take that. GTX 1070, put in the first two. Now the shield covers for the back are already removed because I felt this before. So, so put it in, press firmly once it's aligned, and you should feel a little wet. It might not give you that satisfying as like the ramp. Because it's a bigger device. I wonder if my case bent a little bit. These screws will match up. So it goes up like this diagonally from the bottom right. If you're looking at it from the camera angle. Looking nice and clean. Plug in that CPU power connector right in there. Um, it's probably a bad idea. I'm gonna use my knife to push that down in there. There we go. I heard the satisfying click. Let's plug in the sound card. We're gonna put the sound card in the third slot. Next is the LED light strip. Which I'm actually gonna need that screw. Oh, here we go. Got it. The thumb screw. Let me put that on my drill. Get it ready. Get it ready to put it on. It just sits on the back. It doesn't plug into the motherboard or anything. You control it with headers on the back. Basically, all you have to do for this particular LED strip is to put into the lane where you would normally have a PCI device and screw it in with a thumb nut screw. It has a Molex connector for the power for the LED strip and it has three variants on the back as I showed earlier in the video.
just to give you guys a, a real overview of what I got to plug into this system, there's probably about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve things, thirteen if I plug in this uh, power for a phone, but thirteen cords. Now three are the monitors, two uh, are power, or I mean, internet cords. One internet for my modem. I have two internet ports of, I don't have fiber optics, so it won't be logical to plug it into my computer, both into my modem. So then I got the uh, other, now I have the other one to plug into my laptop for data transfer. It makes things easier since I don't have a network server. And then two of those are also USB extenders for one USB here and two or four the keyboard, which has a USB on the side so I can use um, USBs real quick and easy just by plugging it into the side. As you can see down here, I have a USB still hooked up to it. It just comes right out. Gonna plug it in there, so I'll lose it. I'm gonna plug all that stuff in and I'll show, get back to you when it's done. As you can see, you got the red LED from the sound guard, you got the blue LEDs. What's cool is you can turn on and off these LEDs right from the back so it's not as bright in there. But you showed like the fan LEDs and the sound card, you can turn them on and they have like three little light sensors that you can turn down and up. For monitoring software, I'm just using the HW monitor. It's accurate and it was free, so yeah. I'm just going to do Cinebench just so you get an idea of what the 5820K is capable of when taking advantage of the unlocked processor. So right here we have it peaking at 52 degrees Celsius and only turbo boosting to about 100 megahertz over the base clock, which is equal to mere 3.4 gigahertz. First off, we're in the UFI BIOS. Going down to the AI Tweaker. Where is it? Might be advanced. Nope. It's AI Tweaker. What setting did I change? Auto manual. That's going to stay the same. We're going to change the core right, the core amount, four point or forty six for core ratio limit. Or we're going to change the core voltage to uh, one one point three. Click F10 to save, click OK. The overclock went pretty straightforward, reaching about 4.6 GHz and capping the CPU temps to about 69 degrees Celsius. We also managed to hit a score of 1270. That basic, that's basically a 30% increase over the base clock. Thank you everyone for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike to give it a thumbs down. And always remember to subscribe.